Hi, and welcome to the show. Subscribe at kevinimney.com slash podcast and get CME for this episode by clicking on the CME link in the show notes. Today, we welcome Sarah Saman. She is a retired cardiologist and a master certified physician development coach for Kevin MD articles titled Burnout and Compassion Fatigue, Chronic Workplace Stress and Emotional Withdrawal. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So we'll get into your article in a little bit. First off, briefly share your story and journey. Great. Well, I'm a cardiologist. I retired last year in 2022, graduated from medical school in 1988 and practiced full-time as a cardiologist from 1994 to 2022. I was part of a large cardiology practice. I was affiliated with a busy heart hospital and I cared for patients for adults uh, with the gamut of cardiovascular disease, ranging from very straightforward preventive care to extremely complex cardiovascular cases. Uh, I was really fortunate in my practice to care for a broad range of patients of virtually every socio uh, socioeconomic, uh, racial, an ethnic background that you can imagine. Even though my practice was in a fairly affluent area, we had people from all walks of life and uh, from all over the world. And one real benefit and one of the things I really enjoyed about my practice was the ability to get to know people mm -hmm. and to be part of their lives. I can talk a bit about what I did in practice and how um, some of these experiences led me to develop some of the ideas that I was able to, to put into practice, both as a cardiologist and in my personal life. And one thing that came up again and again was how to prevent heart disease. And people really wanted to know what they could do to stay well. And that actually drove me to write my first book, The Smart Woman's Guide to Heart Health. And in that process, I learned a great deal about communicating with people and making the language of medicine more accessible to people from a wide range of backgrounds. Subsequently, I wrote several more books, and and so that's one part of my story. And the other part is that I'm a competitive equestrian, mm. and I compete in dressage. And a riding accident in 1997 led me to yoga in an attempt to heal myself and improve my mind-body connection. And then through yoga, I inadvertently discovered mindfulness and, in fact, was practicing mindfulness before I realized what it was. Um, eventually became a yoga teacher, had an opportunity to train as a mindfulness coach, and then early this year became a master certified physician development coach. Um, so I retired um, in 2022 um, with the intention of pursuing my education in the fine arts. Mm. And uh, currently I'm enrolled in a bachelor's of fine arts degree program, hopefully entering a master's degree program when I finish. And so all of these experiences have developed a keen sense of compassionate curiosity and a drive to go below the surface in exploring the ways that we communicate with and care for our patients and ourselves. So you mentioned the term compassionate curiosity. Talk more about that. What does that mean? Yeah, so when, when we have a sense of compassion, it often does lead to more curiosity about the people that are in our care, about the people that are in our lives, maybe our staff members, our co-physicians and other colleagues. And yet sometimes it feels in practice as if the time for experiencing compassionate curiosity has just become so constricted. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, my article for Kevin MD was sparked by the burnout that I witnessed in uh, medical practice in which I feel I came precariously co close to experiencing myself. And I think that a big part of that is that inability to express that compassion and to explore our curiosity. So let's explore your Kevin MD article. It's titled Burnout and Compassion Fatigue, Chronic Workplace Stress and Emotional Withdrawal. So tell us how your article came together. 
Yes. So as I said, I witnessed um, burnout in my medical practice and colleagues. I feel that I came very close to experiencing that. Thankfully, I don't think I technically, you know, met the criteria for burnout, but the the factors that have led to burnout are enormous and are currently really unrelenting, you know, with uh, a number of different issues driving that that sense of burnout. Often it's a matter of the bottom line becoming yeah. such a focus. Yeah. You know, corporations have taken over most medical practices, corporations or hospitals that are focused primarily on the bottom line. These are businesses. And so they approach healthcare in a different way than most of us were trained to do. And on at the same time, reimbursement is declining. The AMA recently reported that Medicare physician payments has have dropped by 26% relatively since 2001. And so the doctors now are asked to do more, mm -hmm. supervise more people, more mid-level uh, practitioners, give up more autonomy, spend more time with their electronic health records instead of the clerical staff, fight harder for pre-authorization, forego their own personal benefits and time off, and do it all with high patient satisfaction scores. And at the same time, with these organizations recognizing that about 60 plus percent of physicians are experiencing burnout, they're also being required to attend these workshops yeah. that are supposed to tell them how to deal with their own burnout as if the burnout is somehow their own fault and something they're responsible for fixing. And so as a coach, I see physicians truly in anguish over these circumstances. So you mentioned that you yourself came precariously close to burnout and you witnessed your colleagues experience burnout as well. So maybe you could t share some anecdotes and tell us some stories either from your past or from your current coaching clients just to paint a picture and illustrate what exactly would a burnout physician, what would, what would they look like? Yeah. So the, the technical or Typical description of burnout includes symptoms of exhaustion, cynicism, and inefficiency. And when you when you look at these factors, these are very common in medical uh, circles these days. And the cynicism especially has really grown. And I believe that that's because people just simply don't have the time to step back, you know, experience their patients and their patient situations with the same amount of compassion and curiosity that in years prior, we would have had the time to, to do. So for example, you know, in my practice and in many others, I know I'm not speaking simply for myself, the number of patients that I had to see in a day increased significantly. Mm -hmm. And so what that meant was that small amount of time that I had as a wiggle room, you know, to maybe extend a visit by an extra five minutes or so was no longer available unless I would be running late, which, you know, again, you know, we don't, we don't have time to run late because we have all these people waiting and, you know, physicians are also concerned about patient satisfaction, which is often kind of determined by the amount of time the patient has to wait without regard to why the, the doctor might be running late. And so, for example, some of the some of the stories that I've heard and the things I've experienced, I've had clients tell me that they've been reprimanded for taking too much time to talk to their patients. I've had people be told, you know, you need to put your patient under anesthesia more quickly. You don't need to answer and ask all those questions. Wow. Um, yeah. And on top of that, you know, of course, dealing with the pandemic that led to a lot more mistrust amongst many patients and finding the time to create that connection with our patients became less and less available. And so there's this sense of distance between doctors and their patients that 
in years past didn't exist to the same extent that we see now. In your article, you compare the experience of burnout to grief. Now talk more about that comparison. Yeah. So, you know, we, when we think about burnout and we think about grief, the two have several key features in common. Both are a response to loss in a sense. You know, burnout is a, a response to loss to the autonomy and to the ability to provide the care that physicians imagine and expected to be able to provide when they began medical school and finished their residency. And both burnout and grief can result in um, fatigue and in difficulty thinking clearly. And so, you know, sometimes you find colleagues talking and expressing their frustration in, in ways that really don't align with, with who they are, mm. you know, and it's, it's just the sense of loss of that compassion and that ability, again, to express the compassion that I think is driving so much of this. So take us into your exam room or your office. So if you have a physician come to you for a coaching session and they show signs of burnout or grief, what are some of the things that you coach them through? What are some of the techniques that you use to help them out? Well, you know, many physicians are ashamed of feeling burned out. You know, they don't want to express it. They feel as if it's their fault or a failing, you know, on their part. Um, it, it, we can describe it as a type of disenfranchised grief, which is grief that can't be openly acknowledged or publicly, publicly mourned or socially supported. So if a physician, you know, tries to share these, these feelings with say even family or friends who are not in the medical profession, they're not necessarily understood or supported. So often, you know, we'll explore, you know, first of all, what, what are the factors that are underlying the sense of burnout? You know, what has led to the burnout? Sometimes there's ways to work within the system and, and hopefully, you know, there would be ways to work within the system because we can't, you know, expect that physicians are going to leave en masse, you know, and we need physicians. We need, we need doctors to do the work that they have worked so hard to, you know, to create and to be the physician that their patients need. So, so, you know, my advice or, you know, as a coach, I don't, I don't necessarily give advice, but my, my goal is not that everybody is going to leave their practice and go off in a different direction, but sometimes that's the right thing to do. So for each individual person, it's a matter of exploring, you know, what are the factors that have led to their burnout, understanding that they are still a compassionate person, you know, getting back to the core values that led them to become physicians in the first place and the core values that guide their lives, both in their professional life and their personal life, and how to honor those values. Sometimes uh, because of the constraints of the systems that we work within, you know, we, we have to take a step back and perhaps adjust our expectations. You know, perhaps you do need to cut back hours and perhaps that does mean, you know, less money. But also there's ways to manage time in a mindful way, delegating. There's there's certain techniques you can use in time management that can free up blocks of time. So, it, so it's not, not a inflexible box that we often find ourselves in, but sometimes it's just being able to define, you know, what can we change? Where can we ask for help? You know, where where are the possibilities for help and change within the systems that we work in. I was wondering if you could share a success story or an anecdote where a physician may have come to you for help and you intervene and gave him some coaching tips and really moved the needle for that particular physician. Is there a, a story or an anecdote they could share with us? 
Yeah, I think a lot of times when we're working with time management, you know, we think of that as such a technical sort of process, but I can think of a case in particular where a physician, a surgeon was just overwhelmed with so many things to do and, and, and that sense of responsibility, you know, which is something we want a surgeon to have, but it got to the point that the surgeon was feeling responsible for doing the nurse's work, Mm. the assistance work, you know, going back after hours to make sure that the things that the surgeon had ordered had actually been done and, and not having trust with the people that they were working with. And so what what the this, this surgeon was able to come up with was a process for training the people that were under their supervision, rather than expecting them to do the work and then going back to make sure it was done correctly, you know, really creating a template, which took a little time at the outset. But With this template, they were able to describe step-by-step what they wanted done, you know, in a particular, Mm -hmm. say, post-op situation, give sort of, you know, steps for addressing if something went wrong, you know, what, what are the bullet points that would lead perhaps to the surgeon being called, when could perhaps a nursing supervisor be involved, you know, how, how these processes could be put in place to really make the, the post-op care more efficient. And at the same time, this also created more buy-in and, you know, a sense of control on the part of the people that the surgeon worked with so that creating these, this template also created more cohesion within the group and yeah, ultimately freed up a lot of time and reduced the stress and burnout that the surgeon was experiencing. We're talking with Sarah Saman. She is a retired cardiologist and a master certified physician development coach. Her Kevin MD article is titled Burnout and Compassion Fatigue, Chronic Workplace Stress and Emotional Withdrawal. Sarah, tell us some of your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience. I'd like uh, physicians to remember that burnout is not a failure on your part, but rather it's a symptom of a system that's not working for you. Um, remember that the healthcare work world is shifting, but the work that you do really matters. Don't allow yourself to believe that you don't have options. As a physician, you're highly intelligent, you're highly skilled, you're compassionate, and you're well-trained. Sometimes you might need to get out of your current situation long enough to get a wider view of what's possible, but often there are ways to work within the system that you find yourself in to allow yourself more time and create a more compassionate and friendly and more sustainable environment for yourself and your colleagues and your patients. Sarah, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. And thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. 